My god, this is bittersweet. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Keegs, and we have finally gotten to see the series finale of The Expanse. Now, I'll tell you straight off the bat that this is probably my favorite sci-fi series ever, and the best one this century. So, if that's hopefully a good enough review for you, then go watch it, because now we are going to be talking about spoilers and all the awesome things that I think happened in Season 6. Let's start off right in episode one of season six, where Philip just straight up kills his best friend. It's kind of interesting because I thought they were showing him start to distrust his father and not agree with them. And I thought that was kind of edging for a redemption arc. But then he goes and kills someone, so, so maybe not. But then at the end of the show, he takes his own ship and just heads off and uses his mother's name, Nagata, instead now. So maybe redemption arc back on the table? I mean, it's not the first time we've ever seen someone kill an innocent person and then be redeemed in season, in the next season. Krissa. I'm glad Amos is now a boss of at least, you know, one person, but still a boss. And now he is giving orders instead of taking them. And I think this makes him a really more interesting character and a better protagonist now that he's not just essentially muscle in the background of other characters and he actually adds to the narrative though i wasn't completely enthused with his little pity party he was throwing for himself and thinking oh what do i do now you know what am i even fighting for here but you know go back to the razi go back with your friends and your family and that you're there for them and i'm glad bobby pointed that out and smacked some sense into his head real quick and, you know, I wonder if she took him up on his offer there. Speaking of pity parties, though, Naomi, my God, the first half of the season for sure, I thought she was really annoying. I understand she has PTSD and nobody just gets over that. But to watch that on screen was just not very fun. And if you're having such bad episodes like that, I think it's time you get off the warship for a while and maybe just pump the brakes a bit instead of keep going into danger and triggering those kind of feelings and memories because it's hard to watch and eventually you're going to get someone killed. Though, I'll give her complete credit, she got her act together at the end in the final episode and I thought she was kind of back to her former self that was very self-confident and knew what she was doing and was doing it well. The politics in this show, I think, are one of the best aspects of this show. They do it so well, it's very intense and engaging, and it feels like the fate of humanity hangs in the balance of every decision that they make, which I think is a really good feeling to have in a show when you're watching it. It makes it so intense and you're not sure what's going to happen. I will say, though, that sometimes the trade routes and railgun stations and the locations of all these things were really confusing to me. I think I would have really benefited from seeing a map of where all these things lie in coordination to each other. But, you know, that's just me. Maybe I, I should have done a better job of paying attention or following. I did miss Alex, and it didn't help that they brought it up literally every episode about how they missed Alex on the ship. Though, I guess overall I'm glad they acknowledged that he wasn't there instead of like some shows, they immediately forget when characters die, and it's like they were never there and they have no impact. So I like to see that these characters did really feel for their friend and they were sad, and you sh like saw that through the whole way. And it was nice that at the end, in episode six, Carissa did make a home-cooked meal for them all. I love those quiet times when nothing was really happening and they're just eating dinner and it really humanizes them and makes them feel like they are actually a big family. And it's really nice to see. Usually, though, it's like right before something is going to go wrong. So I try to brace myself after every time I see that. I guess sometimes it's after things go right. So, you know, then it's like a happy ending. But I feel like usually it's it's more right before things are about to go bad. Marco throughout this season, though, I felt like was completely losing it. Every decision he made, I thought was the wrong one. And he had to have another crew member or another person kind of slap some sense into him every time. And they were the ones bailing him out every single time. And there were so many times in this series where Marco should have died, but he didn't because something, especially the one where obviously Holden deactivated the bomb before it hit 
their ship, and I just thought, are you kidding me? Now's the time you're going to get cold feet? Ugh, that was so annoying to see, and I see why Amos was driven to drinking them. I am glad that Naomi was the one to pull the trigger in the end to really take out Marco and his ship. Even though she thought her son was on there, she knew she had to do it for literally the fate of humanity. And obviously that was not an easy thing for her to do. You saw her breaking down at the end, but little does she know her son's still alive. It's going to be quite the twist one day for her that we may never see. I thought it was a really cool way they killed him too, where they activated their ring entity by blowing something up right on the edge of the ring. And now Marco is dead. But if they follow this up, Marco is coming back in the same form Miller did, being controlled by the entity and used as a puppet, essentially. Mark my words, if they come back, that's what's going to happen. This is not the end of Marco's. So I haven't read the book, so I don't know. But Drummer was also doing a great job at rallying troops and then getting a, another army to fight alongside Earth and Mars against Marco. And I thought she did a great job. There are so many scenes in this season where she just took out people without hesitation and always survived and just really was a great captain. So I was a little surprised to see when the first engagement they had with Marco in the episode six, her whole squad was blown to bits. She was herself, her ship was blown to bits. I can't believe she didn't die. There was what, one person left on her ship after that? That was, that was pretty crazy. So she got really lucky at the end too. Her, I mean, you saw her entire side of her ship was missing. I mean, how that happens and she doesn't die from that is beyond me. Also, a bit of a side note, but I thought the limb regrowth technology was pretty awesome. And obviously it didn't work for that one guy, but I would be interested to kind of learn more about that technology and like what is the maximum extent something can be damaged and you can still, you know, regrow it. Obviously, I think it, they said in there maybe it's like, person dependent if their body takes or not for it obviously that guy who got a box crushed on his arm was past the point of recovery so i guess i can't go that far i thought bobby was definitely going to die when she just yoloed out onto the catwalk and went to destroy the uh, gun station but then Amos came and was like protecting her and i thought oh Amos is gonna die while protecting bobby and neither of them died, which I am glad about. I, I like both the characters, so I'm glad to see that neither of them died. But I do feel like there may have been a little bit of plot armor there, because earlier in the episode, Amos was like, they have armor-piercing rounds, and I didn't see either of their armors really get pierced. Uh, maybe I missed something, but, I mean, those bullets were going through, like, it went through the shoulder of one guy, and he was, like, his hat back was blown out, so... It seems like there were a lot of uh, bullets bouncing off them. The end with Holden taking over as president for the Ring Transportation Union, I thought was hilarious. I was really excited to see President Holden, how he managed this, and I do think that he was probably the most neutral party out of everyone. So I kind of wanted to see that, but, you know, Drummer's cool too, so hopefully she does a good job, and I am glad to see that Holden will go back to the Rossi and continue on his adventures. Though I love this series, there's a lot more that can be added on to here, and I was left with a lot of questions to seemingly important plot lines that I don't really know why those plot lines were brought up if they don't plan on having another season. So I'm just going to list out a few things here. Let me know if I am missing something, if they've said something in the series that would have answered some of this stuff, or if there was a cinematic reason why some of this stuff was included, but uh, let's just get into a few of the things that I noticed. At the beginning of the season, they talk about how with the giant asteroids that impacted Earth, causing, you know, ash to go everywhere and dust coating all the crops and everything, all their crops were dying and Earth is slowly dying. Why did they bring that up when they took no action to correct it or any steps towards improving it? I don't really understand why that was brought up at all. It, it seemed to have nothing to do with the actual plot of this show. Second, what the heck was the point of beginning every episode with that girl and her brother? Where he dies and then she revives him and he comes back. And I was really confused as to 
what was happening there because it didn't go anywhere. The whole, the series ended and you know, he died, he came back and then they ran away and that was it. That to me really feels like it's setting up another thing, but I would go so far as to say that potentially that world might be where the proto molecule is from because it, those dogs were natural to the planet they were fixing him in the same way the proto molecule operates so i really believe that that planet might be ground zero for a proto molecule and that would be extremely interesting to see but we need more episodes to see that and to ex further expand on that idea third I don't really know why they added the stuff about Carissa's mod slowly killing her. It didn't go anywhere, and it didn't seem worth it to the plot because nothing ever came of it. Maybe it was to trick us at the end when she went down to fix the thrusters, and then she like went offline. Maybe you thought, oh, she used her mods and now she died. Maybe that's the reason they did that. I, I couldn't really figure that out. It just seemed kind of like a weird bit of side information when she wasn't using her mods. It says she has potential death if she uses them, and I don't know. Let me know down in the comments if you know the answer to that one. Obviously, the ring entities are just as mysterious today as they were when they were first introduced in, what, season three or something like that? I can't remember, but they're just as mysterious, and they didn't really go anywhere, but there was so much setup, I felt like, in this season for a series that they seem to have no interest in continuing so i don't really understand why they kept hammering home you know the entity in there and all of the you know extraterrestrial life because they have no intention of looking for that i mean they even said at the very end holden was like well the proto molecule is still out there and we're gonna have to deal with that eventually I mean, if that's not a cliffhanger, I don't know what is. I mean, gr yes, it was a nice place to end the series. And I know in the books, it's supposed to be like a 30 year gap or something. So it's probably wouldn't even be the same characters if they brought them back. But why have Holden say that at the end if they're not going to go anywhere with it? They're just supposed to be like, well, the audience and fan members can write fan fiction or have a headcanon as to what happens. I think that's a little lame if they're not going to go anywhere with it. So I really hope that another season does come from that. I hope that one day I can get those questions answered through another series. But if not, then I guess I'll just have to go read the books and find out what happens there. I'm interested to hear what you guys thought about the series, though, and if you liked it, if you thought it was a good place to end, or if they left way too many cliffhangers. But for now, I'm Keegs, and I hope you all have a great day.